Today's Old Testament scripture reading is Zephaniah 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Sing, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. It's on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. And our epistle reading from the New Testament is Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Rejoice, good Christian friends. Rejoice. On this third Sunday of Advent, rejoicing is absolutely what we are all called to do. The prophet Zephaniah called Jerusalem to sing, shout, and exult with all their hearts. The prophet Isaiah said, Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And the Apostle Paul told the Philippian church to rejoice in the Lord always. Both prophets and the great apostle are saying the same thing to you and to me this morning because their words ended up as part of the Holy Bible and they've been read by many throughout the centuries. And if they thought they knew their audience, they are probably thrilled at this point that these words are still bringing tidings of comfort and joy to God's people thousands of years after they were first uttered. And God's people are still singing and shouting their praises to God, our God of salvation. Once upon an earlier time, the prophet Zephaniah had brought tidings of bad news, of punishment and sorrow to his people and to God's. But Zephaniah had been part of a great work of reform in his land. The young king Josiah had made drastic changes that included burning, breaking, and smashing idols that God's people had no business worshiping. Josiah had restored, renovated, and purified the temple, and they found a holy book of law there that was either the book of Deuteronomy or a scroll of law. Zephaniah foresaw the coming of glorious times for Israel and could finally be the bearer of joyful proclamation. He announced that the time was coming when Israel would rejoice. According to the scholars, Zephaniah was talking about the future kingdom of God, and that being after the final judgment, when the world will unite and turn to God and enjoy the peace and the prosperity of the messianic kingdom. Check out the second sentence in verse 15. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. 
you shall fear disaster no more. The Lord is in your midst. The Lord is in our midst today. Doesn't that sound wonderfully exciting and comforting and encouraging? And he said it again in verse 17. He told them that they wouldn't need to fear disaster because God will have made them victorious. But he is prophesying an atmosphere even better than peaceful and without fear. Zephaniah is painting a picture of a time that will be joyful and celebratory, and the people of Israel won't be the only ones rejoicing. God, who is in their midst, will rejoice over them with gladness, renew them in his love, and exult over them with loud singing as on a day of festival. This idea of God being in the midst of his people and rejoicing and singing about them, it's so touching to me. We know a lot about our God, the kind of God our God is, creating, loving, caring, saving, mighty, forgiving, full of grace, and that list goes on. But we don't often think of God as a singing God. In fact, I believe this is the only scripture in the Bible that says anything about God singing. What does God have to sing about? The safety and the success and the salvation of his children. All the lame and the outcasts will have been saved and gathered in. In fact, all of God's children will be brought home and will be renowned and praised with their fortunes restored. And this will be a time to party, to rejoice and to sing and to hear God sing. The word picture in Zephaniah is full of emotion. God, the Father, is the one who holds his daughter Jerusalem and sings joyfully in her presence. Just as a loving parent cradles a child and sings out of love, so God's song over his people is born of his great love for us. After a time of hardship, our loving Lord dries his people's tears, comforts their hearts, and welcomes them to a new world. Jesus also taught in the New Testament that, quote, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, 10. In this season of Advent, as we wait for the celebration of the coming of Christ as a baby in a manger, and again, that second coming in keeping with God's plan, we remember the words of the song, Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. We remember the prophet Isaiah who foresaw the coming of the Messiah, God incarnate, God in human flesh. And we remember the words of the gospel writer Matthew who told the story of the angel Gabriel explaining Mary's pregnancy to Joseph who needed and deserved an explanation. Matthew 1, 22 and 23 refers to the prophecy of Isaiah. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, being interpreted, is God with us. This third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete Sunday, and Gaudete, as you may remember, is the Latin word for rejoice. Today's a day of celebration. It's a day of wearing ugly or funny or Christmassy sweaters, like, like this one I'm wearing with the fruitcake on it. <laughs> I had to get up a little bit to show you that. It's a day for laughing out loud. It's a day for Christmas jokes. <laughs> the Apostle Paul said to rejoice in God always because God is near. We don't have a thing to worry about. We should just pray to God and make all our wishes known to him with thanksgiving for what God has already done. This is beginning to sound like several recent messages we've heard in the past month. You know, don't worry, be thankful. Maybe th because that's God trying to make a major point with us. 
course, rejoicing doesn't always come easy. This holiday season isn't always what we might wish or dream or expect or hope for it to be. We're still in this time of pandemic with new strains of coronavirus appearing and continued reports of family, friends, and neighbors who've been diagnosed. And some have lost their lives. Many people are lonely over the holidays, over the years. All of us have lost beloved family members who have gone on to celebrate at God's table and we miss them at our table. We remember fondly the times with them, the sights and sounds and smells of Christmas remind us of days gone by. Some of us don't have all of our children, or grandchildren or siblings nearby. Some of us have health concerns and we're suffering pain. Some have troubled, broken relationships, financial burdens and all kinds of other worries and it's hard to feel joyful when we're dealing with all the emotions we are beset with in these days that we thought would be behind us two years ago. It's hard to feel joyful in the dark days of bleak midwinter. Yet, in the midst of all these struggles and pains, joy bubbles up like a fountain fountain or a spring. Joy surprises us. Sometimes when we least expect it, it may spring from a display of God's glory like a sunrise or a sunset or a rainbow or a meteor from the calm sound of rain on the roof, wind chimes outdoors, or the beauty of snowflakes falling softly outside our window. From music that lifts us from depression to hopefulness, from the touch of a hand or the ring of a phone or a gritty, glittery Christmas card in the mailbox, or the infectious laugh of a child. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 12, 1, 3, and 5 says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust. You will not be afraid. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. God is indeed a God of surprises, blessings, singing, and rejoicing. God is with us, even today. Maybe especially today to give us new hope of joy and peace and salvation in Jesus the Christ. Remember that God adores you and is cradling you in his arms and singing to you and about you. And remember, as Paul said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God indeed is in our midst and surely that is something to sing and shout about hallelujah and praise god amen <laughs>